the webcam industry is on its last leg. At least, let me rephrase that. The gaming and streaming webcam industry is on its last leg. The Razer Kio Pro's top competitors aren't the Logitech Streamcam or the Avermedia PW512. I've only known maybe five streamers off the top of my head who have bought one of those webcams. No, there are plenty of options now for streamers to get far greater image quality at a far lower cost. Now, I'm actually really excited to try out this webcam. It's got a couple features that I'm super pumped for that I've been waiting for and begging for from a webcam. But in order for it to really justify the $200 price point, it needs to beat out its real competitors. Things like buying a used GoPro on eBay and hooking it up to a cam link, which we did in this video and it cost $180. Or even just using your high quality phone camera that's in your pocket already as a webcam, which you can download an app for, for like, less than 10 bucks. So we're gonna be unboxing this thing and we're gonna be pitting it up against all those other options to see if there's any advantage in this day and age to buying a high-end webcam. Spoiler, there is one. We'll get into it later. Before we get to unboxing this thing, I wanna to talk to you, the streamer, the person who streams on Twitch or YouTube or whatever. If you need music in the background of your streams, but you don't want DMCAs, because who wants those? Just use Streambeats. We just revamped streambeats.com to be insanely easy to navigate. So you can go there right now, check out all, I wanna say 10 genres we've got released. You can preview all the genres. You can click links through to your favorite streaming platforms directly to the playlist. You'll never get a strike on any of your live streams. And if you'd like to download the songs to use in your YouTube videos, you can also do that at streambeats.com. Every single song has been personally approved by YouTube to be okay for you to use in your videos and still monetize them. None of them will cause copyright claims. We also, by the way, just released a brand new rock album if you're looking for that for your streams or YouTube videos, both with lyrics and an instrumental version of every single song. You you can find the downloads, the stems, and the tabs to the entire rock album, all on streambeats.com. And they sound like this. And I think that's pretty great. So check out streambeats.com. If you don't find the music service you're looking for, just search Harris Heller. You'll find everything you're looking for. All right, let's unbox this guy. Let me turn on this upper camera. A couple things I'm super pumped about this. First, right off the bat, it's 108060, but it's not 4K. And you know what? I appreciate that. Because you know that they're gonna lose sales by it not being a 4K camera, but let's face it, nobody's streaming in 4K anyway. There's almost no reason to have a 4K webcam. All it does is make the pixels smaller and introduces more noise to your 1080p signal. 108060 is a much better option for streamers. So I, I see that as a move of integrity from Razer. There may have been other reasons for it, but, but I appreciate that move. It also says uncompressed 108060 as well as HDR enabled when you're at 30 FPS. So I'm super interested to see the dynamic range on this thing, how it handles really dark areas, how it handles really light areas. That's usually a big flaw for webcams as you get that glow on your forehead, you get a washed out face the dark area behind you is just pitch black, so that'll be fun. But this is the kicker for me. I saw it in their ad, I'm not seeing it on the box, but it said it had a 103 degree field of view, and here it says adjustable FOV. It looks like there's a grip around the outside. If this is like hardware enabled zoom, that'll be a big deal. I'm not expecting that, that would be ridiculous. But if this is a good 103 degrees, thank you. Thank you for making this wide angle. This will be the widest angle webcam I've seen actually. Let's open it up. Got a nice little translucent note. It's time to be seen and heard, whatever that means. Ooh, ooh, this is a beefy boy. I love beefy webcams. I don't see any reason to make a webcam tiny. They are sitting on top of your monitor. It does not matter how big it is. Make it bigger so you can make the sensor and the lens bigger. Oh my gosh. This thing is chonky. That gets me excited. Oh, you got a cap for the front. I'm gonna look at the cable in just a second. I just wanna take a look at this thing. That's kind of nice. Keeps it clean and it keeps the FBI from watching what you're doing when you're not live. The irony is kind of real that the whole purpose of this camera is to show the entire internet what you're doing, yet you wanna cover the lens. <laughs> I get it, I get it. It's just kind of funny. USB type C, I appreciate that. With a removable USB type C to USB type A cable. Let's see how long this cable is. Feels a tiny bit short. Let's see how it compares to the uh, Avermedia cable. All right, this is where this one ends. This is how much longer you have of the Avermedia cable. That can come in handy. Let's see how this works at the setup. Short cables can be a real bummer, but it is detachable. So not the worst thing in the world. Uh, you got a nice robust little stand here to sit on top of the, uh, the monitor or you've got your threads, of course, if you want to put it on something like an Elgato multi-mount or any kind of tripod. 
it'll work the same. This is a little loose. That makes me nervous. Oh, you can tighten it. Oh my gosh. I thought of everything. Oh, which also means, look at that. You can take this off. You have the exact same threads right on the bottom of the webcam. All right, so they've done a great job on the features. They've done a great job on the utility of how it's built, assuming the cable is long enough. This does not turn, okay? The FOV I'm going to assume is a software controlled FOV. I'm curious if that's cropping in and you're losing resolution. We'll have to check it out. Let's plug it in, give it a shot. All right, let's get started. This, by the way, not the Razer Keo. The last thing I wanted to do was go straight from a 6K cinema camera over to the Razer webcam, because at that point, the Razer Keo, no matter how good of a webcam it is, it would look terrible. So I threw in what you're looking at right here, the Logitech Stream Cam as a little bit of a buffer. This is the Razer Keo. Quite a bit of a difference. This is what it looks like right out of the box. Default settings, nothing changed. We can adjust a couple things for one, it's a little bit oversaturated and over contrasted. Now I could go straight into the settings right in OBS and configure some stuff in here, but Razer's actually got some pretty good software that comes with it with Razer Synapse. Normally not a fan of Razer Synapse. I think they implemented it pretty well with this webcam. We're gonna need to deactivate it out of OBS. Then we can reactivate it over in Razer Synapse. And here we have all of our important settings. Plus, if you really want, you have the exact same settings in OBS right in here. But you can see right on here, we've got our difference in angles. So that's our adjustable zoom that it was talking about. It doesn't adjust that much. Just to give an example, this is the Keo zoomed all the way in, and this is the Keo on its widest mode. Not a huge difference, probably not enough of a feature to really display. Plus this really is just a digital punch in. So I'm curious how much resolution we're actually losing here. It doesn't tell you, but let's go over some of the things I like real quick. So one, they've got a lot of really intuitive controls over here that are really easy for anyone to understand. They give you the most important ones, like brightness, contrast, saturation, and white balance, which is great. I find that default actually still looks the best. Uh, everything else seems to have a little bit too much color to it. And just like a webcam, the color science and the natural saturation, the natural contrast is very much just a little bit too much. But it has a feature called HDR mode. Right now we're in HDR mode, which looks like this. It limits it to 30 FPS. So you can see if I turn off HDR mode, it looks like this. You notice colors are a little bit more washed out. It has a little bit more of that typical webcam effect where you got those bright spots on your forehead. What this is really doing is it's extending the limits of the dynamic range that it's able to capture. So let's say you take the natural light that actually exists in this room and you have the brightest spot in this room and you have the darkest spot in this room. With standard dynamic range, it can only capture a small portion of that real world dynamic range, meaning anything above the camera's upper limit gets washed out as white, like you can see on my forehead right here where it's getting completely washed out. Anything below that turns black. You can kind of see that on the edge of my computer right here. It's not that dark. It just is darker than what the camera can handle. So a lot of people expect high dynamic range or HDR to make the bright spots brighter and the dark spots darker, but that's not what it does. Instead, what it does is it widens the area that the camera is actually able to capture. So that area on my forehead that used to be white because the camera couldn't handle a spot that bright now looks skin toned again. So you get a wider dynamic range of actual colors and actual brightness and it looks a lot more natural. As you can see, I'm back down to 30 FPS. However, my face looks so much more natural in HDR mode. To me, totally worth the trade off. Gladly stick in 30 FPS, but I'm going to adjust some of the colors to get it to where I like it the most. We're going to turn up the backlight comp so it brightens up the image a little bit without having to add too much of this artificial brightness. We'll still pull it up a little bit. Let's adjust the white balance manually. I feel like my skin is a little bit too blue. We're to warm it up a little bit. That might make my skin look a little bit more natural. There we go. I think I like that a little bit better. It's still got a little bit of that webcam extreme color and saturation that a lot of them have. It's doing that autofocus find the wow thing quite a bit. So I'm also going to set this to manual focus. One more thing that I really do like about this camera is when you set your settings in any software, whether it be in OBS or in Razer Synapse, and you move it to another computer or you unplug it or you shut down the computer, the settings save to the webcam. So thank you for that nice quality of life thing there. But let's compare it to some other webcams. I've got the Avermedia 513 that I reviewed before and I really liked. And I've got the Logitech Stream Cam that I had some things I liked about it, but I was pretty critical. First off, Let's go to the Razer Stream Cam. You can just see right off the bat, by the way, first of all, not nearly as wide. That was one of my biggest criticisms about this camera. So it's a super narrow angle. I love the ultra wide angle on the Razer. That's also another thing I really liked about the Avermedia. Another thing is the colors on the Logitech are super washed out. 
compared to the Razer. I think both of them are a little bit on the extreme side. This one seems to be too desaturated, while this one tends to be a little bit too colorful. That blue light behind me, it's not that blue. I've tried boosting up the saturation in this one. All it ends up doing is making my face look completely orange. So this is about as good as we're gonna get here. Let's go back to the Razer, and then let's jump over to the Avermedia. And something was really interesting about the Avermedia. The Avermedia is supposed to be either 94 or 95 degrees, whereas the Razer is supposed to be 103 degrees in the field of view. This is supposed to be significantly wider than the Avermedia. But as you can see, I look further away in the Avermedia than I do in the Razer. The Razer's got more distortion on the edges. The Avermedia definitely looks rectilinear all the way to the ends, which I like, by the way. But the Razer doesn't seem any wider. And considering the Razer is actually a tiny bit further away than the Avermedia, it should look significantly wider. So I don't think the Razer is actually 103 degrees. I don't have any way of actually measuring that, but this seems like a fairly warped lens that doesn't give you as wide as it promises. The colors on the Avermedia are also much more what I would expect and appreciate. You can see it's also got a pretty high dynamic range. I have no washing out on my forehead that's closest to my light over here. Let me see if I can adjust the hue here real quick because I look a little bit green. There we go. That looks a lot more natural. Now you can see what I'm talking about when I mentioned that the Razer has a little bit of that oversaturated, over contrasted web cami look, especially compared to the Avermedia, which I think the colors are a little bit more natural in here. Not to mention we're getting that higher dynamic range at 60 FPS. Whereas in order to get that on the Razer, we have to drop down to 30 FPS. You can see how much smoother it is on the Avermedia. Now, all these criticisms are valid. The Avermedia definitely looks better than the Razer, in my opinion. I'd say the only place it really falls behind is the image isn't quite as sharp. But I would still prefer the Avermedia over the Razer. However, the Avermedia is $50 more at $250 versus $199 for the Razer. But I'm super interested to know which webcam you think actually looks best. Uh, leave a comment down below and let's move on to the more important test. How does this stack up? To the $180 setup of a GoPro going into a capture card and versus your phone going into Epoch Cam. Now, comparing webcam to webcam is cool and it's very useful for people like business executives who are trying to do business conferencing, right? The ability to plug and play without any real technical knowledge can be a huge advantage. But this webcam is aimed at streamers and gamers, people who in general understand technology and are willing to tinker a little bit to get better results. Most of you guys have built your own PCs and there are some pretty cool high quality options for cheaper than this webcam. So what I'd like to do is compare this webcam to those options. But before I do, uh, I wanna point out something I realized, I was actually wrong about something I said earlier in the video. I'd mentioned that the webcam saves the settings to the device itself. Uh, I found that that's not true. I realized it's saved in the Synapse software because when you X out of it, it's still running in the background. I actually have to go into here, right click and exit Synapse. And if I do that, and then I unplug the webcam, which freezes on my face very beautifully like that. And then we plug it back in. You'll notice the settings revert back to normal. You see, I'm not in high dynamic range anymore. We have this super washed out spot on my forehead. The colors aren't quite as realistic. You'll notice I'm not in the wide angle anymore. It reverts back to the standard field of view. You'll see that the moment I click on here, the settings go back to the way they were. I wanted to clarify that real quick, but let's compare this now to my iPhone. Take a look, see what you think. Both cameras, 1080p 30 fps in my opinion i think the colors look a little bit more natural plus we have three different field of views to work with that aren't just digital zooms they're actually three completely different cameras and on top of that it was an eight dollar app that i just had to download on my phone that i already had waiting in my pockets now the downside is every time i want to stream i'm going to have to set this in there plug in the usb cable sometimes it gets a little finicky got to make sure it works and you won't have your phone available to you while you stream. If that's worth it to spend $192 to switch the Epoch cam up here, it's worth noting. But the real camera comparison I've been looking forward to is going from the Kio Pro to the GoPro Hero 4 Black. I was able to pick up this camera on eBay for about $50 and plug it into an Elgato Cam Link, which is $129. Then including the HDMI cable, which we'll just say is $10, it might even be cheaper than that. That brings us to a total of $190. $10 cheaper than the Razer Kio over here. On top of that, a, a huge advantage to going with a setup like this is when you're ready to upgrade, let's say you wanna upgrade to a mirrorless camera or a DSLR, you already have the cam link there. What you're tossing is just the $50 used GoPro. Whereas if you put that money in the Razer Kio Pro, the moment you're ready to upgrade, you have to set aside that entire $199 investment 
and start from scratch. There are, of course, going to be setbacks going to the GoPro as well. They get a little finicky. You're buying something used on eBay, and sometimes those HDMI ports don't work very well. You have to understand how to go through the settings and adjust things manually. I had to adjust the resolution, the frame rate, the shutter speed, the ISO, just to get this thing to work. However, for someone who understands cameras, that's also a little bit of a pro because I know how all those things work and it gives me extra control over my image. And because this is a more professional camera built for professional use, it's just an older model that's gotten really cheap on the used market. The image quality, in my opinion, is profoundly better. The dynamic range on this camera is much higher quality than even the HDR settings on the Razer. You'll notice my skin tones are much more natural. We also have a much wider field of view and multiple fields of view that we can crop in on because this is actually a 4K sensor. So we can crop in on this thing without losing the resolution. So after all these comparisons, I'm super curious to know which one you prefer do you prefer a more advanced setup using your phone or using your gopro or do you like the plug and play aspect of using a webcam and if so which webcam was your favorite please yeah leave a comment down in the description below i know which one i prefer but i also know i'm much more comfortable with this tech than a lot of streamers so it should be interesting to see and whether you agree with my opinions or not totally up to you you do whatever you feel i just hope you found this interesting and i hope you found this helpful if you have any other questions that maybe I, I didn't answer in this that you'd like to talk about, please feel free to jump into my Twitch chat. I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. And as always, happy streaming.